The Faroe Islands are a sparsely populated, remote group of lands between Iceland and Norway and north of Scotland. The people speak Faroese, a language close to ancient German, and as their second language Danish. Several mountains on Faroe could be overgrown pyramids. Because of vegetation and dirt, the pyramids are no longer recognized as such, and they don't need to be thousands of years old. Without proper care, it only takes 10 to 15 years for a building to be overgrown. Apart from the uncanny similarity between the word pharaoh and pharaoh, can I provide any evidence for this claim? I spent two days looking. This is what I found. This is Kirby Mountain, near the small village of Lapa. I've walked the Alps of Austria, Switzerland, France, Italy, and Germany. I've skied the Rockies. I know that mountains don't have well-defined corners, straight lines on the left and right, and what looks like similar size sides. Mountains are usually as asymmetrical as the surrounding hills on these images. This one is called Vikertinder, near the town of Saxon. The top of the mountain appears to be a step pyramid, similar to those found in Mexico and South America. This one is called Villingardel's Jaw. If this is a pyramid, it would be the biggest we've ever seen at 841 meters or 2,759 feet above sea level. The landscape across from this pyramid also looked potentially artificial. The range of mountains behind that. I don't want to read too much into this, so I'll stick with the pyramids for now. These are the two pyramid-shaped caps of the Bordyarns Mountain near the town of Klaxvik. There are about a dozen other hills I'm aware of that could potentially be overgrown pyramids, but the four presented here are the most obvious to me. Unfortunately, next to nothing is known about ancient or even medieval pharaoh history. The oldest known document that talks about the islands is the 10th century Ferienga saga, of which only fragments remain. I ran the Icelandic text through an online translator, but found nothing relevant to pyramids. According to the saga, the first settler was a pagan man by the name of Grimer Kamban. Grimer is related to Grimm, and Kamban is Gaelic for crooked. Kamban fled from Harald Fairhair, the king of Norway. Maybe this is a short form of saying that the Gaelic people were the initial settlers of the islands. Recent archaeological finds on Pharaoh say that a mystery people were living on Pharaoh hundreds of years before the Vikings settled there. Other legends say that the first inhabitants were the paper, the fathers, a group of Irish monks. Pharaoh was said to have converted to Christianity around the year 1000. According to the 12th century book History of Norway, the islands of the seas around Norway, not specifically mentioning Pharaoh however, were populated by dwarves before the paper monks arrived. Originally those islands were inhabited by pents and papes. Of these races, the pents, only a little taller than pygmies, accomplished miraculous achievements by building towns morning and evenings, but at midday, every ounce of strength deserted them, and they hid for fear in underground chambers. The papes were so called on account of the vestments in which they clothed themselves like priests, and for this reason all priests are known as Poppin in the German tongue. However, as the appearance and letter forms of the books that they left behind them testifies that they were from Africa and clove to the Jewish faith. Jewish dwarves from Africa, hiding in caves from the Celtic monks? Talk about forgotten history. From research on the video about dwarves of the Atlas Mountains, I recall that many of the now extinct race of dwarves converted to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam to evade capture. They professed one religion in public, but practiced another in private. This image is my screenshot from the medieval Carta Marina map, showing pyramid-like structures in Greenland. Well, Greenland is not Pharaoh, is it? No, but it's close enough. This is Skansen Starfort. As every other place in the world, Pharaoh was part of the Starfort culture, previously discussed. This is a 1747 map of Greenland, Iceland, and Faroe Islands. Greenland and Iceland were not ice-covered. Where we today find ice, there were cities, cathedrals, castles, and fortresses. A close-up of the islands, called Faroe here. Where we today find the curvy pyramid, there is a town called Vag and Vagseid. The word Vag means scale, and Eid means oath in the Icelandic language. Both Icelandic and Faroese are really ancient German. 
Why I stress this point will become obvious later. In modern German, both words are still identical, Vag and Eid. Where we today find Villengardel's jaw, there is an island called Wydro, and a town near the pyramid called Quan something. I can't read the rest. Wydro is a Frisian or Northern German word and means again. This is significant because some researchers have speculated that the Faroe Islands are the ancient and mythical Frisland. There is a real Friesland, spelled with an extra E, and it's in northern Germany and eastern Netherlands. And a mythical Frisland which, on ancient maps, is where we today find Faroe. The modern town name is Vyrii, which sounds similar to Wydro, but Wikipedia claims this word means wood isthmus, whatever that's supposed to mean. The island today is called Vydoi, which in Danish is Videro, which is again identical to Wydro. Where we today find the two pyramid caps called Bordo Your Nest Mountain at Klaxvik Village, we see on the old map another town called Vog. Why two separate towns on two separate isles by the same name? Below it, we see Bordo for the land as a whole. In Western Frisian, Danish, and German, this is the word for Burgundy. This is a map of the mythical island of Frisland, interchangeably called Faroe. It's my strongest piece of evidence that the mythical Frisland and the Faroe Islands are one and the same. The map was allegedly published in 1845, but it displays names unrelated to the Icelandic ones we just saw, and that were supposedly in use since the Norwegians allegedly took over the island in the year 1035. The Lakwitz editing Wikipedia say, Frisland, also called Frischland, Friesland, Frislanda, Frislandia, or Fixland, is a phantom island that appeared on virtually all of the maps of the North Atlantic from the 1560s through the 1660s. They also label the maps of Frisland imaginary. And they tell us that Frisland mustn't be mistaken for Friesland, which are an ancient people who lived in what we now call Netherlands and Northern Germany. All right, Wikipedia. Frisland and Friesland speak the exactly same language, Frisian, and are in reasonable proximity of each other less than two days by ship, but I mustn't mistake one with the other because one of them is imaginary. Then riddle me this, Wikipedia slash academia. Why are there no pre-1700s maps of Pharaoh? Why do pre-1700s maps show Frisland where they should show Pharaoh? This 1558 map by Nicola Zeno shows Frisland as a densely populated place, more busy than any place around it. I came across an entire thread on StolenHistory.org about Frisland. The author proves to my satisfaction that Faroe Islands are the flooded remains of what was once the larger landmass of Frisland. I won't regurgitate all the data here. Check out the thread if you want a deeper dive. Knowing now that Faroe are the remains of a lost civilization, the presence of pyramids is no longer totally out of the question. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two or three parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two.